Hi, I'm Peter from Copy Pass, and I'm here with Eden to look at the build of these 1964 for Emma Feminas. Firstly, welcome Eden. Thanks man, good to be here. We first met in 2014 when you'd mm -hmm. come into the warehouse and buy parts yep. for your machine builds. And you were doing some pretty epic builds at the time. But for those that don't know you, do you want to give a 30 second bio sure. to who you are? Yeah, uh, so, you know, I'm an industrial designer. Uh, I guess my technical trade background is. And um, started tinkering with coffee machines back in the day when I first met you. Uh, humble beginnings that have led on to, you know, a, a business of my own doing uh, customized coffee machines as Majanic Design. And before we dive into these machines, we act, these machines actually started because I fell in love with Femma Femina in Newtown and the shop owner, he had an antique shop and it was the one item in the shop he wouldn't sell to me. So in 2011, when I was traveling through the north of Italy, I found one and I bought it. That trip, I ended up buying three and I sent them back and I had them here in the warehouse on display and Eden would come in and buy parts for the machine he was building and one day he turned around to me and said, Pedro, let me build these Let's for you. Let's do this, yeah. That was 2016. I know, seems like yesterday, but there you go. You actually not only built these, but I have a thing for three. So I have three of these and this, I have- This is true, <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and I've got three Fama E61, so one group, a two group, and a three group. So he actually built my one and two group yep. as well. And I had a Fama Lombro, which is also Levy built that. Yep. And you didn't do the Mazas, but I have three Mazas, which we actually did a video on, on a custom paint job as an honor to my dad. But before we dive into these machines, I have a question. Let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite lever machine? I have a vintage or new? I'm curious to know what's popular out there. But going back to these, you want to talk about the build, the process? Sure. What it was like to work on these? Yeah, so I guess um, with every project, there's, you know, you, you kind of, you deal with them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and you deal with them as they are. I think with the restoration of a classic machine, especially something that has a particular aesthetic, um, like these Feminas do, they're, they're, they're quite attractive. You know, they've got that old school, almost art deco um, styling, that Italian, you know, uh, provenance about it. Um, I think the important thing when you're restoring them, for me, is not to butcher them, but to kind of, you know, enhance that, that, that uh, character, that original quality. Um, and just sort of bring back that original luster. You can never fully restore that old stuff, but you can kind of give it a second lease of life. And you know, hopefully you can score the right parts through someone like Pedro um, to you know, do what I would consider a, uh, a uh, like, uh, what would you, uh, the word escapes me, but I'd say like a homage or a respectful rebuild. Yeah, I actually wanted these built back to spec, so things like the switches were totally. super hard to find because I wanted the switches of the era yep. rather than just putting modern day toggle switch. We've, we did the elements, all the seals, the glass. So these machines are all three of them fully working order. And, and OG, so one of the cool things about working on them and one of the awesome things about, you know, being sort of commissioned to work on something like this by Pedro is, um, you know, his, his kind of sense of respect for what that history is in the machine, those parts, the switches, they worked, so why wouldn't we keep them? You know, and that, that's, that's just a nice thing. It's, it's, it's a, you know, a respectful process. I think on vintage machine, you did touch on it, but on vintage machines, I do like keeping them to spec and original. Totally. Sometimes a few, like on one of the E60 on the E60s you built, I wanted to remove the mercury pressure stats and put a modern day one, just to be a bit safer to use sure. today, but I did keep them in storage the rebuilt mercury pressure stats. But some of the machines, like the more modern machines built, I do like this going yeah. completely like, Look, crazy. I'm glad you said that, because rebuilding or refurbing the mercury switches yeah. is actually my kind of fondest yeah. memory of working on those machines, because the mechanism itself yeah. is something to behold, yeah. and it's something to kind of really, you know, restore and preserve. So those Mercury switches are actually not part of this machine, they're part of an E61. Yep. We will be doing a video on the E61. 
But with these machines, I think what I liked the most about them when I first saw one was that they really are a cool little home machine. Mm. Levers always been a bit of a thing that I've enjoyed and I think the look of them for the era, so these are from 1964, these are actually the V2.0, there, there is a V1 and That's a V2.1, right. but for the era, I actually find them super modern and there's something about how small they are. They're running two elements of 200 and 800 yeah. watts. So you, depending on your switch, you can run over 200 or 1,000. You're right. They kind of they were a little bit ahead of their time. And and I'll I'll talk a little bit more about something yeah. else yeah. along those lines. But yeah. you hit the nail on the head. I think for something of this age, they're yeah. doing a lot of stuff that modern machines, yeah. modern levers, especially mini levers, yeah. could only dream to reproduce. Yeah, I just I think they're actually super cool they're sick man they're awesome yeah and you scored them from italy so like even better it was actually a fun trip i don't have photos from that trip but these were all in the northern italy the first one was bought in florence one in milan and then one cool. just south of milan um in lake garda which is kind of we actually hired a boat and we were traveling around with in a little village and they had one and um i think like i had cash on me and they were excited. They didn't see value in these anymore. How cool is it that something so sort of compact, tangible, yeah. you know, hands-on or whatever, as a small project yeah. has such a history, a yeah. story behind it. And that's, I don't know, for coffee nerds like yourself and I, you know, that, that matters a lot. Eden, thank you for coming on. Thanks for having me. Now, if you haven't already, let me know in the comments below, what's your favorite lever? I am really curious to jump in and know. And if I do own one of them, I'll bring them on the channel and film it. Thank you again. If this video has brought you value, hit that thumbs up. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe. And Eden, see you on the next video. Done deal.